Is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So it's good now. So this multi-cylinder engine that I was discussing in the previous lecture, I request you to go through more details. You know, you can refer that book, Joseph Heatman, or you can refer online material. All right. So I'm leaving a small portion of it as self-study for you. I mean, I have covered it. What I want you to do is just uh, the remaining cylinders, for example, if you go for a four cylinder engine, what will happen in such a case? What kind of differences will come in the balancing? If you go for six cylinder, what will happen? If you go for eight cylinder, what will happen? If you go for a V arrangement, what will happen? So those things, please read through, okay? In the slides, I have not given all kinds of details. I've only given very small detail in the slides, but I want you to go through some material pertaining to that. If you have the book, Joseph Wittner, uh, a good amount of uh, details are given in that book. Very nicely, they have explained also differences. Any one of you have? Uh, Any one of you has that? Uh, Joseph Eaton with you? Is there anyone who has Joseph Eaton book with you? Not getting any response, but I'm still audible, right? Yes, sir. So if you don't have the book, if any one of you have the book, just try to share it with others, okay? If at all there is a soft copy. I don't have a soft copy. I purchased the book. You can even purchase that book if you want. Actually, it's, it's, it's a prescribed textbook for this course. All right. Okay, next we'll move on to the unit fuel, ignition, and electrical systems. All right. So, what is this fuel, ignition, and electrical systems? Anyone? What does fuel system talk about? What runs the engine? Hmm? Of, what runs the engine? There could be different types of fuel. Not exactly. Yeah, that's okay. But more importantly, what the fuel system talks about. Uh, how fuel uh, from the cylinder is injected into the engine? From the, the cylinder. Entire process. From the cylinder. From the from the, the tank to the cylinder. Yeah. How fuel is stored in the vehicle, and how the fuel is supplied to the cylinder, right? All that from the fuel tank, the storage till the supply into the cylinder, till it starts its combustion. Right, so that's fuel system. Ignition system is about uh, you know igniting the fuel and then the burning of the fuel inside the cylinder. And then electrical systems talks about what? The spark initiation. That's an ignition system. For a scientist. Ignition okay. system, you have the spark plug and spark ignition. 
electrical systems what comes in electrical systems starter motor yes starter motor yeah starter motor all the electrical components of the automobile comes under electrical systems the headlamps the tail lamps the stop light the indicator the air conditioner the horn you know everything any electrical component that is there inside uh, the automobile comes under electrical systems you can call it electrical and electronics but all that comes under electrical systems we will not see all of them all the meters you know the fuel level indicator the speed indicator and everything all of them come under that we will discuss just few of them other things are open you know you can go ahead and see the details of we will just discuss few prominent points okay so this is what we will cover as far as the ignition system is concerned and then we will go to fuel system and then uh, the electrical and electronics will come further so in the ignition system first we will talk about components of the ignition system then we will talk about battery ignition magneto ignition electronic ignition and then we will discuss about ignition timing there is a necessity for ignition timing what is this ignition timing all about firing order yes firing order sir not firing order have you studied ignition timing in your uh, prime movers no yes, sir i mean ignition delay all this ah uh, what is that ignition delay ignition timing what does it mean like sir you know in order to prevent the knocking or some other disturbances and we do have some specific time where in which we need to uh, basically burn the fuel no it is not just to avoid knocking there is more important reason maximum okay. power output ha huh? yes maximum power so what exactly ignition timing means to what you are correlating it to what you are correlating it the valve timings mm valve timings no more importantly the piston position the position of the piston is more important for ignition timing all right have you guys uh, when do you think the spark is given uh, in the cylinder at what position of the piston the spark is given in the cylinder? and the piston before, is that yes. before it reaches the top dead center yeah slightly before it reaches the top dead center not ideally the spark should be given when the piston reaches the top dead center to get maximum power output but we give it slightly before it's called ignition advance right why do we do that why do we do that you studied that right it's very simple why do we ignite the fuel just before the piston reaches tdc none of you know i'm surprised a very simple sir am i still connected i have to check that probably you guys are answering i am not able to hear it am i still connected yes sir you are connected okay so that means none of you know it so to give see, some time to burn all of you exactly it takes some time for the combustion for complete combustion of the fuel air mixture the charge inside the cylinder it takes some time so when the complete combustion happens when the piston is at tdc you will get the full power in the expansion right you will get maximum power output but by the time when you uh, by the time the piston reaches tdc if you uh, give ignition before even the fuel is burnt completely the piston has already started moving down so you will lose power you will not get the entire impact of the combustion gases on the piston and if you 
advance it too much, that means even before it reaches TDC, well in advance if you do that, in fact it will create negative power. It will not even allow the piston to go to TDC and it will create negative power. So ignition timing is very important. You have to just uh, ignite the fuel air mixture right before the piston reaches TDC, just before the piston reaches TDC, so that as the piston reaches TDC, complete combustion of gases have taken place and then the entire power will act on the piston to push it down. So how do we do it? What are some of the conditions? Is it going to remain the same or ignition timing will keep changing with speed and load? All that will be discussed. Okay. So that is what ignition timing is all about. Now what does the ignition system do? No, ignition system, it provides a spark at the end of the compression stroke. That is ignition system. If you go to diesel uh, fuel injection system, it provides fuel at the end of compression stroke. Because in SI engine, you have fuel air mixture inside the cylinder. So ignition system is more or less used with spark ignition engines, SI engines. Right? So this spark ignites the air fuel mixture in the cylinder. Right? So each cylinder of an engine has a spark plug and is mounted in the cylinder head. You can have multiple spark plug also, not just one, so that you can have multiple uh, combustion nodes, so that you get complete combustion. So a lot of research has been done and many different uh, engine manufacturers, they have located spark plugs in different locations on the cylinder head. Have you guys gone through some of that? That spark plugs, what kind of positioning of the spark plug they do? Have you ever uh, seen that? If not, you know, please go ahead and do some work. You will get easily all these topics, you know. Uh, location of spark plug on the cylinder head, where all spark plugs are located, all that you can see. It's, it's interesting. Different people use different techniques. Right, and they are unique about it, and they have reasons for it. Okay, what is spark plug? You know, it's simple. It consists of two electrodes with a small gap. So, electrical charge jumps from one electrode to the other. When the charge jump is there, you have a spark. So that spark is used for igniting the charge, the air fuel mixture. I mean, you see. so a high voltage current jumps across this gap, producing the spark. So ignition system has to work over wide ranges of speed, load and climatic conditions. Also, the spark plug is located inside the cylinder where temperatures can go very high. So that's the reason spark plugs are usually pulled out and cleaned once in a while because the soot and the carbon deposits that are formed, it can uh, completely block the gap between the two electrodes. Have you guys seen that frequent, uh, frequently during services? The spark plug is pulled out and it is cleaned. Have you seen that? At least in some garages, has anyone seen it? Anyone? I think you guys are a too distance from real world, probably. I don't know. How many of you can do it? Yes? I have seen it. Indian doesn't stop. You've seen it? Yes, sir. How many of you can do your own uh, small plumbing work at home? If there is a small tap leakage or there is a small pipe, how many of you can pull out it? Okay, Arthik, Sangeet, who else? Vijay. Only three. So, you guys have to learn, start doing it because you know you can't feel the subject unless you get involved. Very simple things. House wiring. You learned house wiring in workshop, right? Did you guys learn house wiring in workshop? Yes, sir. Yes, you learned house wiring in workshops. It's, it's a very interesting field, you know. If there is a small problem, can you pull out the bulb and connect another bulb? At least that much can you guys do? 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, many of you can do that. But if there is a small problem in the electrical supply, you should be able to, with proper precaution, I mean, don't go and catch a live wire and say that, you know, our automobile engineering faculty asked us to do our house wiring, so I am holding the live wire. Don't do that. You have to be trained. So learn properly how these things are done. So make your hands dirty. Start doing hands-on stuff, okay? Go and do things, simple things. Use the tools and see what best you can do. If something is loose and rough, see, tighten it up. Don't always expect that somebody else will do it. Learn to do things. How many of you have a toolkit of your own and use the toolkit at home? Do you have a toolkit that you guys can use? Yeah, good. One, two, three. Some few people have raised their hands. Very nice. So you should have a toolkit. Simple toolkit, you know, where you have screwdrivers, plier. How many different types of pliers are there, you know? How many of you know about a nose plier? A long nose plier. Anyone knows about a long nose plier? How many of you know what is a plier, first of all? Anyone know the cut wires? Uh, yes, it is not just used to cut wires, it is it is used to do many things. So there is something called as a long nose plier. Do you know what is a long nose plier? It's a very pointed edge. Yes, it is very pointed and long so that you can go to smaller gaps and it can pull out stuff. It can do many they see many different tools have specific functionalities. So about these tools, at least you should have uh, Overall knowledge, you know, when it comes to spanners, there are different sizes and different varieties of spanners. You should know what is used for what purpose. Then screwdrivers, there are different types of screwdrivers, you know. Then there are, there are Allen keys, there are different types of screws and hammers. There are different types of hammers. I, I think you guys have learned about different types of hammers and all in the workshop. Have you learned? Different types of hammers. Okay. No. no, sir. No, sir. Oh, my God. You should learn about different types of hammers. You know, there is something called as a claw hammer. There is something called as a wedge hammer. There is something called as a mallet. How many of you know what is a mallet? You don't know what's a mallet? Mallet means a soft hammer is called as a mallet. Usually mallets are made of wood or rubber. Have you seen uh, in courtroom the judge uses a hammer? Order, order. Have you seen that? Yes, sir. That is called, sir. That is called as a mallet. Okay, that's also a hammer, but that's a soft hammer. It is used for very soft materials. You know, sometimes you may have to work with very soft sheet metals. You may have to work with very soft materials, but still you need hammer. So mallets are used in such places. And then there is something called as a claw hammer. You know, it, it has a claw-like end. One end is used for uh, the hammer blow. The other end is like a claw where you can pull out the nails or other stuff. That is very common. Then there's something called as a wedge hammer. The one end of the hammer is like a wedge. You know, it is used for different purposes. So like that, even in hammers, you have different types of hammers. So please learn what are these different types of hammers. What are the different types of screwdrivers that are there? Why I'm saying all these things to you? Because you are mechanical engineers. So at least this much you should know, right? What are the different tools that are available? Even in drill drilling machines, what type of drill bits are used for concrete drilling and what type of drill bits are used for wood drilling and soft metal materials drilling? And, uh, you know, there are details. These are simple details, but please learn them. You know, what are different types of nuts and bolts? What are different types of screws that are there? Very interesting. So do some hands-on. When you do these hands-on, uh, you will not just theoretically understand the subject, you will be able to feel the subject. You will understand, oh, exactly, this is the principle and this is how it is done. I am able to see it. I am able to feel the subject in reality. So I am uh, purposely taking a detour because it's important. So spark plug, if you see, because spark plug is inserted into the engine cylinder, where enormous combustion is taking place and large temperatures are there. So there is always carbon, the soot is formed, you know, it is sent out of the exhaust. But then a lot of carbon particles settle down on the uh, 
spark plug. So when they settle down on the spark plug, it's a, a small gap between the two electrodes, right? The gap gets filled up by this suit material. So if the gap is filled up by the suit material, you will not have any spark anymore. So you will have trouble in the engine. That is why in frequent servicing, they will clean the spark plug. They will remove all the suit material that have been deposited in the gap. They will use a small uh, blade or something and clean the gap between the electrodes. They will use an emery sheet or a sandpaper or something and clean the gap, if you see. So oh, that happens at, uh, uh, I mean, after prolonged usage. So some of uh, the servicing includes those things also, cleaning of these parts and so on, right? So the reason I said this, ignition system has to work over wide ranges of speed, load and climatic conditions. Also, it has to work under enormous temperature and pressure inside the cylinder, right? particularly the spark plug, not the rest of the parts. The spark plug has to work under enormous pressure and temperature. Right? So if you look at an ignition system, I hope the diagram is visible to you all, right? Are you able to see the diagram? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So these are the components of the ignition system. So this is called as a contact point ignition system. There are different ignition systems. Mostly they are contact point ignition system. You have an ignition switch. It's this one. So this is the part where we insert the key, whether it is two wheeler or four wheeler. Insert the key and we turn on the ignition. Right? We say turn on the ignition. So what we do is basically we connect the battery to the induction coil. That's all we do by turning on the key. So there is a battery, right? There is an ignition coil. The ignition switch basically connects the battery and the ignition coil. All right. So what is this ignition coil all about? Ignition coil is a step up transformer. So what a step up transformer does? It raises the voltage. It increases the voltage. So that is called as a step up transformer. So it raises the battery voltage to a high voltage. So it's going to go very high. From a 12 volt battery, you can go up to 25,000 volts, right? So you have studied about a step-up transformer in electrical engineering. Step-down transformer, step-up transformer. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. If not, please go ahead and read about a step-up transformer. How it does it? Okay. So this causes the spark to jump across the gap between the electrodes. So you get a very high voltage. When you supply that high voltage to the spark plug, you know, it has to close the uh, circuit and there is a gap and the spark, only when you have high voltage, a, a current jump can happen. So you provide that high voltage in the gap and there is a current jump across the gap. So that is the spark. There's nothing but the spark, right? So that is ignition coil. It's nothing but a step up transformer. Very simple. Ignition switch, it connects the battery to the ignition coil. The ignition coil is nothing but a step up transformer. That's what you see here. Ignition coil. Battery, ignition switch, ignition coil. Now there is something called as ignition distributor. Ignition distributor is, this is distributor cap. You can very easily see in many of the engines this one. But what is the ignition distributor? It has contact breaker points that works as fast acting switch to allow or close the current flow through the coil. So the rotating cam has number of lobes equal to the number of cylinders in the engine. I'll show you. This is the distributor. Are you able to see this? This is the distributor. Here you see there are four, four let's say we consider a four cylinder engine. Each cylinder will have one spark plug, so we have four spark plugs and the distributor has four connections. So every spark plug will get the spark from the ignition coil according to the firing order. So depending on the firing order, depending on the sequence in which we want the sparks to be given into the cylinder, accordingly we will connect it in the distributor. Right? The distributor rotor that you see keeps rotating and it will come in contact with one particular spark plug. That spark plug will give the spark into the cylinder. Next it will go and give, next it will go and connect with the next one and next one and next one and so on. So this sequence will continue 
in the same order. So you will get sparks within the appropriate cylinder. So this distributor, right? How does, and, and remember, this supply of high voltage power is only for a fraction of a second. It's a surge. It is just given for a fraction of a second. It is not a continuous supply. It is just given for a moment. How does that happen? So that is done by the condenser. You see the condenser is connected to the ignition coil. Right? This is the condenser. And the condenser is nothing but like a capacitor can store the charge. So you see the points are open here. And this stores the charge and when the cam rotates, you know, when when the cam rotates, it pushes out the contact point. So the the the, the, the current doesn't flow. It when it's open, the whole thing gets charged up. The condenser gets charged up. A lot of power gets charged up. And then suddenly when the cam rotates again, the contact is made. So when the contact is made, all the charges suddenly sent through the circuit there is a surge of power through the circuit and that goes to the spark plug and we get a spark and again as the cam rotates you know the contact opens up it, it breaks the contact and then again it makes so make or break, break the contact so the cam keeps rotating and the contact points come in contact with each other and they move away from each other they come in contact and move away so because of that what happens the charge gets stored and discharged it gets stored and discharged that happens continuously and depending on which spark plug that charge should be supplied to accordingly the connection will be given in the distributor so then the charge is supplied to the appropriate spark plug and the current goes and creates a spark within the cylinder is that clear to you all how this happens sir yes so the condenser powers the coil back again and from the coil to the distributor, right? Yes. Okay, sir. Yes. It surges the coil and from the coil it goes to the distributor. It enables the coil to send that high charge. Okay, sir. So the distributor also distributes the high voltage. You, you see the condenser aids in collapsing the magnetic field. That is how you get the surge in voltage. Secondary ignition cables. So these are the secondary ignition cables. It includes the coil, wire and spark plug. Okay, let me go here. So these are secondary ignition cables. That means after the coil steps up the voltage, whatever is there after that. So these are secondary ignition cables. This one, you see that which comes out of the ignition coil and goes to the distributor and all the cables that are connected to the spark plug these are called as the one those are bold in color you're able to see some of the cables are thin some of the cables are thick right in the diagram so those thick cables they are yes, as, yeah those thick cables are called as secondary ignition cables and they have to carry high voltage power right so they include the coil where and spark plug wires, they connect the center of ignition coil and the distributor cap and they have to carry this high power or high voltage current. So spark plug, I'm not going to get into the constructional details of the spark plug, you can read through. But it's mostly made of ceramic outer material and other uh, details are given. So you can see here, there is a ground electrode and then there is a uh, center electrode. And there is a gap between the two here. So the jump happens here. This whole thing is inserted into the cylinder. And the jump of current happens here. You get this part and that ignites the fuel air mixture. So you can read through uh, the details. All right. Okay. Moving on to battery ignition system. Whatever I showed you, that is the battery ignition system so the battery generally supplies low voltage 6 to 12 volts the ignition coil is the one which boosts this voltage by thousands of times because of the step up transformer action there so the contact breaker works in conjunction with the ignition coil and generate the necessary high voltage so this one this is called as the contact breaker or the condenser it, it includes the condenser so this is the contact breaker. You see, as the cam rotates, it breaks the contact and makes the contact and enables the coil to 
step up the voltage and provide high voltage to the distributor right so the distributor helps in feeding the high voltage current to different spark plugs as per the firing order of the engine again the way you connect the different spark plugs depends on the firing order in whichever way whichever order you want the spark plugs to uh, fire accordingly we connect it to the distributor so you have battery uh, i mean you can uh, just visualize the whole ignition system it starts from the battery because that's the source of power voltage then comes the ignition switch right and from the ignition switch you go on to the ignition coil and from the ignition coil you go to the distributor and from the distributor you go to the spark plugs and this ignition coil has another unit called as as part of it it has another unit called as the what is that the contact breaker right contact breaker is connected to the ignition coil which enables the ignition coil to multiply this voltage and store and supply high voltage to the distributor and eventually to the spark plug so this is the sequence you can just imagine it and you will know in what sequence you have the uh, components within the ignition system okay so see uh, the remaining ignition systems i'm not again going into the details but i'll tell you the overview what is this magneto ignition system instead of battery providing the supply you have you you guys have, uh, you guys have heard of dynamos and cycle right how many i don't know but nowadays you don't have dynamo on old cycles you must have had dynamos how many of you know what's a dynamo have you guys seen a dynamo on a cycle bicycle yes sir a red color one at the back where will it be connected yes sir to the wheel the rear wheel right usually yes, rear wheel or front wheel so there is a small cylindrical component which has its own wheel on the top and that's connected there is a switch which helps you to connect the dynamo to the wheel cycle wheel right and as you pedal the bicycle the dynamo also since it is attached to the cycle wheel now the dynamo also keeps rotating it's it's nothing but a simple generator you have the armature winding and the magnets right the coil and the magnets so in the magnetic field when you have the wires the winding uh, rotate there what will happen electricity is generated pretty simple right so now that becomes the source of electricity and then the remaining system is exactly the same you have the ignition coil and then the a contact breaker and you have the distributor and then the spark plugs so now instead of having a battery you are just having a magneto it's called as a magneto a dynamo it's, it's exactly the same so that's just the difference between a battery ignition system and a magneto ignition system is that clear the source of power is a magneto rather than a battery right so moving on to electronic ignition system in electronic ignition system it's exactly the same as other uh, uh, the battery ignition system here also you have the battery right but then the distributor right the distributor uh, i mean to say yeah the distributor is of a electronic distribution right the contact breaker making and breaking the contact happens by the electronic i'll i'll read it here the electronic ignition system does not use contact points it uses transistors and other semiconductor devices which acts as an electronic switch that turns the coil on or off so the coil on off is not made by the cam or contact breaker it is made by this arrangement electronic switch so that's the only difference between regular battery uh, ignition system and electronic ignition system so why do we get away with the contact breaker and put in an electron what's the advantage here so uh, it's more compact compact not just uh, it's not that is not the reason you see yes so the electronic distributor has an armature or letter and a magnetic breaker coil instead of a breaker cam and contact points so if you see here you have the breaker cam and contact points right 
contact points and breaker can. So instead of the contact breaker, now you have the electronic distributor, magnetic pickup coil. So what's what's the advantage? Yes. Simple. You don't have to think so much. See, when the points, when there is a contact breaker which is coming into contact and moving away, wear and tear is very high. When you have this one, the life is far superior compared to something which has moving, I mean, this also has moving parts, but then they come in contact with each other and break the contact. That doesn't happen here. So that way you have better life and efficiency of the system and it minimizes wear and tear, right? So like the breaker cam, reluctor has same number of teeth or tips as there are cylinders in the engine. When the reluctor rotates, each tooth creates a voltage pulse in the pickup coil. This signals the ignition module or electronic module to open the primary circuit, right? Instead of a cam, you have this reluctor or armature, which helps to open or close the circuit by the signal it provides. So that's electronic ignition system. But rest of the components are exactly the same. You don't have any difference. All right. Okay. Now moving on to ignition timing is very important. What is this ignition timing? The crank angle at which the spark occurs relative to the top dead center is called ignition time. So have you uh, Have you gone through uh, IC engines lab? Are you going through IC engines lab in this semester? Or was it okay, last semester? Then. Last semester. So you you valve timing diagram. Did you? There was an ex, was there an experiment? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So how were you uh, told to do that? I mean, what instructions were you? You may not have done it, but can you vaguely remember how that is done? They will keep rotating the flywheel, right? Yes, sir, the so marking. we made markings. Like, yeah, we made ah. marking on the flywheel and the fuel consumption was noted. Different so marking on the flywheel. Why that marking is on the flywheel? Because you slowly rotate the flywheel because of which the pistons will move up and down. And then you will see that the valve just opens, right? When you see that the valve just opens, you can mark that. That is valve timing. Same way, ignition timing also, it depends on the angle at which, for example, the crankshaft rotates. When the crankshaft comes to the vertical position, the crank throw, when it comes to the vertical position, the piston goes to the top dead center. But this ignition is provided before the crankshaft or the piston becomes uh, I mean, it comes to top dead center or the crankshaft becomes vertical, the crank throw becomes vertical. So, this is the angle, you see, it is the crank angle, right? It is the crank angle at which the spark occurs relative to the top dead center. So, even before it comes to top dead center, the spark occurs, right? And then it comes to the top dead center, the entire, com by then the combustion is complete and then the entire power, the expansion is given on the piston as power stroke and the piston moves down. So this relative angle or the crank angle at which the spark occurs is called ignition time. So you can see here, too early sparking before TDC will get combustion completed before the piston reaches the end of compression. This will result in large negative work. Why? Because as the combustion gases are expanding, the piston has to push itself to go to top dead center and then it will have to move down. So there is negative work if you advance the ignition timing very early. But if you do it very late, what will happen? Too late of sparking lowers the peak pressure. You will not get very high pressure of the charge. By the time the piston has started moving down, the pressure inside the cylinder has come down and then you give ignition, you will not get, the efficiency will go down, you will not get as much power. 
So much of the heat gets dissipated into the cylinder block rather than getting utilized in pushing the piston down. Right? So this can even lead to overheating and subsequent damage of the cylinder. So what is the optimum spark timing? So it is like 35 degree before BTDC means before top dead center. So you consider the crank to be, can you guys uh, visualize it? So you're able to see what's there on the screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Maybe I yes, sir. Undo this. Mm. Draw it somewhere else so that I can draw the. So if this is the. This is how the crankshaft rotates, you know. This is the vertical position of the piston. Pardon me, you know, the diagram is not so clear, but still I hope you can understand what I'm trying to communicate. So this is top dead center. And if this is the direction of rotation of the crankshaft, so somewhere here, right? When the piston is somewhere here, this 35 degrees. I'm so sorry. But you're getting what I'm saying, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This 35 degrees yes, before. That is the optimum timing to give the spark within the cylinder. Okay. Did I confuse you guys? Is it clear? Yes. Yes, sir. So that 35 degrees before BTDC means before TDC 35 degrees is when is the optimum spark timing. So when you do that, you will get the maximum efficiency, power efficiency. Otherwise, you know, it will create uh, either negative work or you will lose efficiency and a lot of heat gets dissipated into the cylinder components leading to overheating. Okay. So we have two mechanisms to control the spark advance. One is called as centrifugal advance mechanism and another one is called as uh, vacuum advance mechanism. Okay. So anyway, so these two we will see in the next lecture. You can key in your attendance. Meanwhile, if any one of you has any questions, I can answer them. Kalyan is here, Kalyan. Yes, sir. So you guys are able to access the LMS, right? Yes, sir. And uh, what about the registration of students? Has everybody been registered into the LMS now? Uh, everyone is uh, registered, sir, actually. 
Everyone has registered, but ensure that all of them have access on LMS. It's important, check with your faculty advisor because when it comes to exams and awarding of grades, it will all be through LMS. If they have not been registered into LMS, it will become a problem later on. Even though they have registered into the institute, they should be registered within the LMS. Okay? Okay, sir. So check with the faculty advisor once carefully. That's all of them have been registered into LMS also. Yeah. Okay. If there are no questions, you can leave. And if somebody has questions, they can stay back and ask me. I'll be here for another five minutes. Thank you, guys. See you. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, sir.